Okay, now we're back in After Effects and it's time for compositing. So uh, import the footage. Uh, you can start with uh, the renders. Uh, click on the first uh, image in the image sequence here. And uh, make sure the PNG sequence is uh, turned on. And then click open. Uh, then we can import uh, the diffuse pulse render and uh, make sure PNG sequence is ticked there also. Press open. And then, of course, the footage. So let's go to sequence, table, JPEG sequence, open. Uh, go to uh, the diffuse and reflection pulse here and uh, go down to interpret footage main uh, click the pre-multiplied with uh, pre-multiplied matter with color and the shoes black if it isn't already selected uh, then uh, make sure the frame rate is uh, the same as your footage has and uh, the rest is okay then you can uh, right click here again on the diffuse uh, interpret footage remember interpretation then select the other uh, uh, image sequences and uh, go to interpret footage apply interpretation now all of these has the same uh, frame rate and uh, settings uh, then uh, drag the table uh, sequence down to the new comp button then uh, import the diffuse However, you can see here it sticks to the table, uh, but it doesn't look very good. So import the shadows too. That's better. Uh, the edges are a little too clean and the colors doesn't really ma match. So uh, I'll uh, fix that now. Uh, type exposure or uh, expose and it will uh, come up here so drop that on the diffuse pulse and uh, lower it a bit so it fits nice, nicely there somewhere that's good and uh, maybe the shadow opacity is a little too high so press T to open the opacity attributes and lower it a bit. You can see here. You get a much more you get much more control this way than doing all the shadows at once in 3ds Max. And uh, now we uh, one uh, thing that really sells this effect is uh, motion blur and uh, you can of course do that in uh, 3ds max but the render time will increase tremendously uh, so uh, i prefer to do that in uh, after effects and i use a plugin called real smart motion blur r s m b and uh, uh, it is very useful if i first only pre-compose these two by Control shift c uh, move all attributes into the new composition and then just drag and drop this on you see instantly it creates motion blur on this on all of the uh, pots and uh, it looks so much better with motion blur and it uh, makes the entire effect much better and now let's color correct the entire footage here a right click new adjustment layer and uh, why not uh, uh, use the curves effect and uh, increase the contrast a bit that was maybe a little too much something like that and uh, yep yeah, it looks good and uh, I would like to make a vignette too. So layer, new, adjustment layer, and uh, drag the curves onto that too, and uh, 
lower this. This is only how it will look in the corners. So, uh, and so hold down this button and select uh, ellipse tool, then double click. Uh, double click. Yeah. And uh, go down to masks and uh, pick subtract and then uh, feather the mask a lot. Uh, then press T to get to the opacity and you can see here it creates a very nice effect here so uh, around 69% is fine and uh, now I think this is uh, done so uh, let's render uh, go composition add render queue and uh, pick uh, the uh, render settings you want. Uh, I use QuickTime Movie and Photo JPEG, maximum quality, of course, and then uh, pick the name, and then press render. Uh, my name is Marcus, and uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. Uh, hey, doll.